Hello Year 7, welcome back to the seventh lesson in this series of videos on Gothic literature. Again, we're going to be concentrating on vampire fiction today, but we're going to go into a little bit more depth on the context of the genre, okay? After that, we're going to continue some work on Dracula, and then we're going to leave it like that. So, just a reminder of our learning objective and success criteria again. So the main aim of today is to consider the history and the conventions of vampire fiction. So, over the next couple of slides, you are going to be learning about the context of the Gothic. So what I'd like you to do is write down some notes on um, these next few slides, and then we're going to answer a question. So, in 1897, the year that Dracula was published, Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes books topped the bestseller lists. As the 1800s neared their conclusion, it was becoming increasingly evident that science was overtaking religion as the cornerstone of people's beliefs. The character of Sherlock Holmes typified this change. Here was a man who would, who would use his logic and analysis to hunt criminals and, in the case of stories such as The Hound of the Baskervilles, disprove supernatural mumbo-jumbo. Stoker himself told parts of his story in the form of medical journals and records, giving it an air of respectability and authenticity. Indeed, it is perhaps the way the story of Dracula was originally told, as much as it as much as at its loose basis in historical fact, namely the influence of Prince Vlad and Transylvanian folklore that has blurred distinctions between fiction and non-fiction. Despite, or perhaps because of it, the growth of scientific investigation, the late 19th century saw a wave of paranormal and gothic tales being published, also including Robert Louis Stevenson's The Strange Case of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde, which I am currently teaching to Year 9 and H.G. Wells's The War of the Worlds. Okay, Dracula was one of the first novels to explore the space between life and death, dreams and reality, the conscious and unconscious states, coinciding with the emergence of Freudian psychology, but it was far from the earliest example of vampire fiction. 1816 is known as the year without a summer, it was unseasonably dark and wet across Europe. Lord Byron, a man described as mad, bad and dangerous to know, hosted a gathering of writers and poets at the Villa Diodati beside Lake Geneva. In this gloomy and unnatural setting, a challenge was set to compose the scariest tale. This scariest tale, I'll give you a clue. It's about a monster that we studied last half term who was actually murdered. Yes, you're right. It's Frankenstein. Awesome. So this is what I want you to do today. This is our task. So the following extract is taken from Dr. Seward's diary towards the end of the novel. So read this extract for me and then answer these two questions. Does this seem more like the Dracula character that you expected compared to the extract that we looked at yesterday? Which words have the strongest impact on you and why? So give me an answer to those two questions in full sentences, please, and then upload them to Teams. Thank you so much for listening and any questions, as always, um, comment or email me or however you want to do it. Okay, have a good day.